previously on Gas Monkey Garage. Richard wanted to start 2024 off with a bang by doing a Gas Monkey first, letting the fans choose the build. And the winner was this 1978 Ford Ranger F100. Y'all chose to make it a manual, supercharged, coyote-powered static coilover, pro-touring-style monster of a truck. And last episode, the boys were given a 35-day deadline to turn this truck into an absolute tire shredder. Now, the boys have made progress but the clock is still ticking. This is Gas Monkey Garage. Get you some of that. So as we're finishing up the last little bit of the chassis, it's time to set the engine and transmission in. We really need to get a good mock-up. And just like y'all voted for, we have a Gen 3 Coyote that's supercharged. 785 horsepower, 600 foot-pounds of torque at 13 pounds of boost. Dude, this 79 F100 is gonna be a tire shredding monster and I cannot wait to get it going. So let's get this thrown in the chassis. done all right so we got the engine transmission mounted uh tranny cross members built done kenny got all his boxing done on the rear seat notch i mean the chassis is ready to go under the truck so i think ricky's got it up in the air and waiting on me and you to push it back yeah you got those wheels unlocked ricky So I called Caleb over at Willwood and explained to him what we really wanted to do with this truck. This is going to be a runner and a beater to where we can actually just get down on this truck, take it to a track, haul ass. And dude, he hooked us up with the 14 inch aero package, six piston freaking calipers. This truck is going to be a monster from top to bottom. Don't let the paint fool you. All right, so it is day five, actually day four and a half, because there's still some hours left in this day. And uh, the guys seem to have gotten a long way. All the ride tech suspension's in, uh, brakes are on, motor's in, tranny's in. What are we looking at, guys? Look at this. We, uh, this side's a little bit open, but we have the fender over there. We was getting uh, some measurements for JTX on wheels. So I'm glad you're out here. So um, I know I said order a Gen 3, but what did I end up ordering? What did y'all get? That's a Gen 3 Coyote. It just has some accessories. <laughs> like what? I mean, it it's got a supercharger. It's just a little yeah. bit of a supercharger. I saw a little bit of extra stuff up there. And so, uh, what are we looking at horsepower wise? 785. 785? 785. Yeah, it seems like such an arbitrary number. Can we get like 850 maybe? Can we do something? I bet we could get there with a good tune. That's just out of the box with the supercharger on a Gen 3. And that's not headers, that's not tune or anything. It's not playing with the pulleys either. Mm -mm. Okay, well, then we'll start there. And uh, six speed manual? Yep, T56 Magnum. You know, so. this is getting to be so much easier with y'all compared to like the old days where I had to be back here and approve this and approve that. It's just in and done. Y'all are four and a half days in. We're, mm -hmm. We've been moving. Honestly, <laughs> we've been booking it. So the whole frame is ready to rock and roll. That's correct. Ride tech is all in and done and right. Mm -hmm. And uh, did we order axles and uh, center pumpkin and all that? Yep, and we went with Curry. So okay. uh, they're sending us the third member and their brand new cut to fit axles because they want us to show that they have them available to work. If you have an odd size rear end, you have three to four inches to play with on each axle to cut off. So it's kind of cool. It's a really neat design. It's pretty much all you got to play with. 
But anyways. All right, let's talk about wheels because I know JTX asked if uh, we were going to use their wheels. And uh, I hate, you know, the way these Ford trucks started getting done. Mm -hmm. You know, people were putting those Crown Vicks under there. And I hated that because you always had just this flat, ugly wheel that looked like a hubcap. Yes. I need some depth up there. Well, the way that we were just measuring it, I think we can get about a five to six inch lip on the front wheel and still be inside of fender wells. Can we get a little more than that on the rear? Yeah, so we're looking at, we'd probably do a full 10 inch wheel, maybe even like an 11. So, okay. that's a lot of meat on the front, especially a truck. All right. All right. This is one that they sent over. We didn't know how you would lock it. I like the wheel. Mm -hmm. This is something they already do, or is this custom for us? No, this is something they already do. Uh, Chris said that they've been so slam packed that uh, it'd be easier to just do it off the shelf, but it is one of their new off the shelves. No, I'm fine with that, man. Chris kills it over at JTX, and I'm glad that he wanted to do this one. So I like the wheel, but it can't be that polished. We got to darken it up some and go with some of these colors like we're picking that kind of a gun metal-ish gray for the inside mm -hmm. so what do you think about uh on the wheel i mean we could do the back barrel we could do the barrel we could do parts of the inside i don't know i mean i don't remember who was saying it but somebody was even saying like was it a good about, idea yeah yeah it's probably me probably you <laughs> but, <laughs> so the back barrel like you're talking about and then the inlays in the darker color to where the faces and the front lip are polished i like that okay i think that that would be a would sweet the look. center be inlay the whole center and then going down these these arms inlay or polished no the center would be polished onto the outer lips but it looks like it pours into the inner lip maybe can you look at it <laughs> i don't know whose eyes are better kenny don't know nothing about inner lips Oh, just the outer one. Well, I'll get on the phone with Chris <laughs> and see what he can do and what he offers, and throw your idea at him and see what he says. All right. Yeah. Um, cool. I think that we try to go with the same color that I still haven't seen from Mike on the uh, interior. Kind of hit that color because I'm thinking it's going to be real similar to to the legs on that uh, Jack. Okay. Just like a. a I want something that's not quite this, but sort of in the edges of the patina, but then also flat. Almost battleship? No. Maybe even like on lev rack right there. Okay. Well, that'd be easy to go off of. Maybe. What about the inside of the doors? For the. Cabinet? It's a little too chromey. Okay. It's a little too shiny, but by yeah. the time we get flat, um, I don't know. I thought Mike was going to do some spray outs. Have you seen Mike around? No. Nope. Well, neither have we, so. <laughs> Great. You gotta go find him. He's next door somewhere in his cave. Dude, this is rad. The engine compartment underneath this lip and everything's gonna be super clean, super nice, uh, whatever flat gray we pick for the interior. And I was thinking, we talked about it the other day, I think we do the dash. I was gonna leave the dash black and the dash pad black, door panels black, and black seats, black carpet and then the gray everywhere else. I think we do the metal part of the dash in gray and then black dash pad and door panels and seats and stuff. I think that'll set it off because yeah. by leaving it just black, I think it looks like we didn't try. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Um, quick question though. We, we didn't answer this one. What size wheels are you picturing on this? Because obviously we ain't tucking giant 24s like we did on skid mark on i this. want the most amount of wheels that we can get and perform the way that this is going to perform if we're pushing 800 horsepower i want it to perform not rub and do everything it's supposed to do but i want as much lip front and back as we can get mm -hmm. i'd like a lot more lip in the back and that's going to be our dictation on what size it is okay all right gonna why did you make a, a weird mark when i said dictation was, your eyes got all squinty and got weird <laughs> the chassis is complete. We've got all our ride tech components in. We did the full front, you know, cross member, A arms. 
did the C notch and four link in the rear. We've got everything welded up, boxed in like we need, and uh, I, pretty much it's your turn. So do you here? Do you, do you want that? I don't like it. I'm just gonna be you for now, okay? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Hi, my name's Josh, and uh, so we got all our frame and stuff. We got our ride tech things all bolted and welded into place. My voice isn't that high. And today we're gonna do uh, where we gotta get the frame taken apart, and we're gonna take it to Mark, and then he's gonna do some paint stuff on it. You know, bring it back to us. If you leave anything on the frame, I swear to God. I'm gonna lose it. What I'm gonna do is when I get the chassis over to my side, I'm gonna sand it and I'm gonna paint it. I don't know what color yet though because Richard really hasn't said. Like, he likes grays, then he likes black, and he does, I, 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 don't, I don't fucking know, I don't know. So I'm doing my best to get all this surface rust off and then uh, once I get that done, I can uh, get it in the paint booth and start getting some paint on it, which I need to hurry because I gotta get it back to this. While we're waiting on that chassis, Josh and I are gonna go ahead and get started on the Coyote engine. We're gonna put a billet oil pump gear in here. So we're gonna take the whole front timing cover off, valve covers, take the supercharger off, and put this oil pump gear in and make it solid. You might remember you can go back and watch a video about skid mark we put a chevy ls or lt 8.8 .8, i'm sorry 6.6 .6 liter lat in it <laughs> and uh, so what i'm trying to say here is that was a cam in block push rod motor but this here is a coyote motor from ford and what makes it different is the cam is not inside the block it has dual overhead cams so this is kind of a, a more recent technology and when they do this this one here has variable valve timing. So these cams can actually change their timing with oil pressure since they're overhead. And on top of the valves, you got two of them, intake and an exhaust. So one cam's working all the intake valves, one cam's working all the exhaust valves. So it gives a little bit more tunability instead of just one cam turning both intake and exhaust. And that's kind of what makes the Coyote unique. Is it is a big engine though. So for swaps, it's not as popular because I mean, you can look at that, that thing has a, a girth to it um, that might not fit in all engine bays. Calm down with the girth stock. Finally got some colors for me to choose from. I guess that's why you're here though, good look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If not, point me in another direction, I'll keep doing them. That's out, that's out, that's out, that's out. Okay, definitely out on top. I think that's too dark. I like that one. This has a little more blue to it than that one does. See that blue side tone? I'm wearing glasses and I can't see that. Really? <laughs> Cross your eyes and then look at it. Right? I think. I lean in towards this one. And then do you want to do one or two? Do you want to do, are you wanting this interior? Are you wanting it just firewall and those no. components? Wh whatever color we pick is going to be everything interior, including up here and the dash. Yep. So I think that'll look good. And the firewall and whatever components that we had to clean and redo for okay. the front. Yep. Balance, all that stuff. And uh, whatever we need to touch up underneath because I know we went under a ways okay. and then we'll trim black everything else so Cause I want to drive shit out of this truck so all the same color yep okay what did everybody else pick oh, nobody else picked anything I don't let them look at it until you've decided oh come on now. you want me to go get them yeah Josh oh, okay. come here 
All right, if you were to pick one, what would it be? Remember, we're doing the whole dash. I like the darker. It's not really because darker. Everything, it's not darker than that? No. If you look at a different side, if you come oh, over here, okay. it's not. So it's, it's metallic, it's gonna flop. Cause it's got more metallic in it. That's a little more blue. Same metallic. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Either that or the dark. Just I didn't like the dark. Yeah. Because it wasn't dark to begin with. I was thinking kind of contrast, but I mean, that'll still look way different because... What is it up against? Yeah. I mean, it's nowhere near factory, but mm -mm, it no. pulls a lot of the color. See, that color's right in, in there. Yeah. In a lot of the spots where yeah. it's coming off. And then the firewall, yeah, that'll look real good inside of there. Why, well, where are you at with them? I'm with this one. Yep. Mike? Why are you looking down here? Mike's back. looking down here. I'm back away with it, it really gets blue. Why can't we have a silver? That's what bothers me. Well, I mean, if you get it in here. They usually have a blue or a red side tone. With this color, a blue side tone is way better than a red side tone. See it from here. That looks weird. But then if you take it to the to the light like that, it's got a good look. But if you there's gonna be a and, dash mat here. Yeah, black. You have a black contrast to go against. Yeah, which. Grab that that centerpiece and hold that up to the black. What would be a black mat? Don't yell at me. It really turns blue, dude. It lightens up a lot. Mm-hmm. I need more silver. Put that on there. I need more silver though. That one looks way more silver. That one looks way more silver. It does. This one gets way Big too dark. Okay. We'll go with that. Unless you just have a, a brilliant brain idea on how to get me more silver and less blue. Let's go with that silver. That one pops. Is it going to get bluish when you don't have like a, a gloss on it? No, nope, that has a red side tone to it. I want more silver. I hate to do that to you, but... No, it's fine. I want you happy. That's all that matters to me. We're getting into this area. Silver. I like that. It's closer to factory. Have we tried pulling just a factory and putting some metallic in it? No. Hmm. I can if you want me to. I might have a slick. Yeah, I can cocktail some shit up. Okay, cocktail it up. It's time to jump back into the cab and get this thing rolling. We got AC to do, wiring to figure out, and we got some badass new pedals from Willwood. So big thing, this truck was an automatic. We're making it a manual now. So it's gotta be a lot of different, you know, configuring under the dash and everything. So Caleb over at Willwood really helped us out with this setup. But then we got one more thing. Everything's going badass with this truck. So why not go one more time over the top? Carbon fiber drive shaft. Carbon fiber? That's badass. Let's go get in it. for the clutch master so now we have a clutch and we can use a manual transmission with this truck now since we did move and change the pedal assembly to kind of more one that is not attached to anything it does have some mounting holes on top of the pedals that you can use to attach the support behind the dash so normally you have this pedal box this is the original one just have the brake no clutch this would attach from the firewall to the support inside the dash. And we can't use that anymore, but what I'm gonna do now is make a support from the firewall or the pedal assembly up to that support to make everything stronger inside and not flimsy. So I got the brake pedal and the clutch pedal in. 
as you can see here's the reservoirs for both of them master next is actually getting the figuring out where the fuse box is gonna go because we actually have two fuse box we got one for the chassis which is gonna be the lights and all the accessories on the inside and the second one is actually gonna be the engine fuse box because it is a standalone from Ford performance so that's gonna be the next thing going on and apart from that we're also gonna have to figure out what are we gonna do with having AC and heat in this truck because I mean we are in Texas even though it's a race truck or maybe it is maybe it isn't but we need AC So we got the front suspension knocked out. Ricky got the engine all buttoned up other than just bolting supercharger on. We need to put a pull plate, but we're ready to pretty much go in with the front and now it's time to dive into this entire rear suspension setup. I'm not gonna say rear end cause that's weird. But once again, we went back with Curry on our Ford nine inch. Oh, whoa, a Ford nine inch? Like kind of what we used on Skidmark, you know, the Ford rear end on the Chevy. What, do we want to put a Chevy 12 bolt on the back of here? Absolutely not. Look, I gave you the one win. Take it. We're building a Ford. It's going to have all Ford parts on it. Okay. Cool. Back to it. We got Curry's 35 spline cut to fit axles. These things are monsters. And yeah, you can cut them to fit, trim them down, whatever, you know, width you want in your rear end. And then they're built billet housing everything you can think of curry third member 370 gears this thing should get down pretty good dude but after we're getting down we're gonna need to stop and here we have will will's 14 inch aero brakes that are going in the rear and it's gonna help stop really fast because yeah. it needs to stop <laughs> getting no, so I, awkward I mean, it's a true statement it's gonna stop really well so and uh, I got to quit bagging on you so much about the Chevy stuff. I mean, Chevy dominated the 50s and 60s. And they kept going with a massive engine power plant that's gone, you know, several decades now. Just kept making it better, so. Look, you have a steering rack and you have a rear end. <laughs> Take the win. <laughs> Take the win. That's it. So all the suspension is done. Uh, it's all tightened up, torqued down. We are ready to throw the engine into the chassis and get this cab on here because Mike has been waiting patiently to paint this thing. I think he's got the silver picked out. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, we don't know what he does on that side of the wall. But everything's good. We got a roller and it's time to get this thing thrown in. All right, so the engine stabbed in and now it's time to throw on some headers just so when we drop the cab, it's a lot easier just to do it now. And dude, just wait. Our guys over at Ultimate Headers did us a solid again. Look at these freaking headers, Ricky. They like, look good. This thing's bad, bro. Like, we have no room in this chassis. Coyotes are a really, really big block. This is an old chassis, so it's narrow. Engine bay doesn't have a lot of room. So, dude, they really went out of their way. Got these things to us in like two or three days. Something like crazy fast. So, I'm ready to get these in there and see how they look. Let's do it. So we got the cab down on the chassis and we're just wanting to make sure everything clearance is correct. Why are you laughing? I don't know. What is he doing? I'm he just makes, watching you do this. Makes me nervous. Don't worry about it. Do your thing. 
All right, cool. So uh, the forward steering column originally went down at an angle. So what we wanted was to just straighten it up. So we had Kenny cut off the frame, cut off the firewall brace, remake it. What we're gonna do is take, make sure we got it centered up, make sure the steering shaft still clears everything, doesn't hit anything, and then put this back on and then go to a, like a uniball setup, you know, something more clean than that big old triangle. And uh, then it's over to you. And then you're not bothering Woo. us. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <laughs> So the guys are busy uh, on the uh, truck chassis, but they got the cab over to Mike. And if you remember, we were gonna paint the inside like a silver color. And I was having a hard time finding out what silver that was gonna be. Is this the silver we decided to go with? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one you picked. Out of the 85 spray outs I did. You said you liked that one the best. I don't know, it's really silver. Well, yeah. It's, it's you, you said you wanted more silver and less blue or red, so I did straight silver and then a little bit of black. I hope you like it because like I already, I already painted a bunch of parts already. Where? Well, the one right over there behind you, the core support, the um, inner fenders, the bunch of brackets and stuff. It just looks so much compared to what we were looking at when we were looking at it over there. Well, here, hold on. Up. Maybe I can make it better. I mean, there's no factory color on this truck anywhere, hardly except for inside the door jams. So I yeah. guess it, it wasn't a metallic silver. It was more of like a Is gray. That <laughs> no, it's not. Well, it, it's definitely not as silver now. Well, there you go. Okay, thanks. Hmm. That's a lot of silver, dude. Sounds like it was a lot of silver too, but you were pretty adamant about it. How much have you painted so far? Core support, both inner fenders, and a bunch of brackets. <laughs> Damn it. Look, man, I get paid by the hour. You want to change it, we can change it. What do you think? I thought it was too much silver to begin with. I didn't like it. I think it's too much silver too. But you always like what I don't like. I don't know if that's on purpose or we just have different tastes in I mean, paint. The original color is like, I guess it was a gray. Or a, yeah, it was no metallic in it. But it's not really gray either. What is the fucking original color? It's kind of like a grayish tan. This is well, This floor has not been sanded. This is. Original color. It's too silver, dude. You want it this color? No. <laughs> oh my god. I want it just slightly darker than this color. Slightly With a little darker. bit of metallic in it. Slightly darker than this color. Yes. Or that co which which color? The, this the, color. The factory color, and with a little bit of metallic to it. I'm sorry, man. I don't be sorry. Make, hey, make don't myself make the wrong call. No, don't be sorry. It is what it is. Uh, that's too much. It won't look good, I don't think. I don't. I didn't think it would look good from the get-go. But well, why didn't you stand up for it a little harder? You could have argued with it. Ten years. I, I know just to go. Okay, let's do it. Because sometimes, sometimes you're. Most of the time, you're right. Well, I'm freaking screwed on this one. Uh, we got to change that. That's okay. not going to fly. Okay. All right. Sorry, man. Yeah, no worries. Good thing you get paid by the hour. That's right. Mine is just like us. So, well, that's your fuck up, so I should get painted double. Once again, and this is a reoccurring thing when it comes time for paint, is Richard 99% of the time knows what he wants, which is nothing like what I would want because we just have different tastes, right? And everybody's that way. And, you know, it's like I said before, there's another project where 
he couldn't decide on paint and it's like trying to get your girlfriend to decide where to go eat well once again it's lunch time or dinner time and we're in the same situation where you know what at this time we sit down at a restaurant made the order and it's not what they want so we're gonna have to go back and redo some stuff but you know and this is really hard to go back and do this stuff because you know i'm i'm in my soft guy era right now you know i mean i don't feel like richard's i mean yeah he's wanting stuff redone but where's the drizzle drizzle you know what i'm saying where's where's my drizzle drizzle why don't we do the interior and all that stuff that color that's your metallic that's your darker gray i could do another hundred spray outs but you know okay. that's okay. i like it the, yeah, the engine bay and the cab being a little bit darker actually would look I think sick. I like it. Okay. I don't like what you did do. Yeah, I don't, you know what? I don't like what I did either. You should have stopped and came I, out me and said, Richard, this is going to be stupid. I should have, but I'm an idiot. No, no. I should have. I you're, you're the smartest painter I know. That's not going very far. It's <laughs> like you don't know very many painters. I don't, not only that, but I, I do know a lot of painters. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll. Okay. Let's go with this color. Okay. So then we'll have the old uh, Velociraptor. Yeah. That's really fast. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. faster. Okay. Yeah. It's like new versus old. All right. Look that up on your computer. All right, guys. So yesterday we got the cab over to Mike, and he's going to do his thing, get it painted up and looking good. But while we were waiting, me, Kenny, and Ricky got this entire chassis built out, ready to go. It's pretty much a roller waiting for the cab. Um, dude. I gotta tell you, I know that it's patina and I know that it's ugly, but everything underneath this thing is about as bad as you can build. We got a Gen 3 Coyote with a freaking Edelbrock supercharger, Ride Tech suspension. I mean, that shit right there alone is just a monster. Oversized Willwood, six piston brakes. I think they're 14 inch for a pickup truck. That's nuts. Tremec T56 transmission Magnum. And, dude, let's hit on this one more time carbon fiber drive shaft that's so cool that's the first one i've ever done pretty excited about that we got a four nine inch rear end it's the stock one but we did beef it up and we put all curry guts in it so curry third member uh oversized axles 35 spline oversized wheelwood brakes on the rear race fuel tank i mean dude anything you could do to this truck is being done and then we're doing even more in the interior. But the next step while we're waiting on Mike is to get this engine fired up. We just want to hear it. I know it's not the proper way, but dude, we're going to throw some castor oil in it. Ugh, castor oil, castor oil. We're going to put it in the engine and get this thing fired up. I know it's open headers, but it's still fucking sick. Hey, we got that castor oil you wanted. Dude, this is the same stuff I run in mine. I got like 230,000 miles on my Porsche. Mm -hmm. dude, I mean, I beat the tar out of it, so that's pretty good stuff. You beat the what out of it? I beat the crap out of it. You beat no, you beat the tour out of it. Yeah, well, that's and y'all want to give me hell about the way I talk. You're right, I, I do talk funny, but no, seriously though, that's pretty good. And uh, if any of you don't use, mine also uses 5W20, so I'll take it if you don't use it all. We got some O'Reilly stuff over there in the cabinet for your car. We're going with the 5W20, what uh, the engine asks for, and we're doing that because it is uh, variable valve timing. Mm -hmm. So the oil pressure is changing the, uh, you know, the cam Change timing. The cam, go. Yeah, so we better go with the 5W20. So I've already been back here like uh, three or four times and we ain't gotten nowhere. But uh, so this time I went ahead and brought a celebratory beer in case it, <laughs> in case it does start up in a, or a depression beer in case it doesn't again. Something to drown my sorrows. I think it's time to celebrate. I think we've got the wiring figured out. We had one ground that was loose. So... Well, as I've always said, let it rip, tater chip. Woo! I like it. Sounds like a Gen 3 Coyote motor with a little extra stuff in it. Electric. <laughs> hey, all we know is that we can throw this cab on now and haul ass from here because we know it busts off. Cool, we'll be done with the cab, what, in the morning? Uh, he said tonight, so fingers crossed. Well, that'll be in the morning. In the morning, yeah. Okay. Well, then <laughs> y'all can have a running, driving truck by Friday. If that cab gets over here, 
going to be pretty damn close to next Friday. Super cool, man. You guys are crushing it. And uh, just keep going, man. Keep going, keep going, keep going.